Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Quick exciting news, I hit 500 subscribers. Thank you so much. Oh my god. I am overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> I can't put it into words. But I've had a very stressful and long day and coming home from all of that to come home to 500 subscribers on my channel is a really huge accomplishment and goal and is one of those things that it's hard to kind of wrap your head around. You're like 500 people. Like it doesn't feel like a lot, especially on YouTube in the grand scheme of it. But at the same time, like that's a lot of people that like I couldn't public speak in front of 500 people. That's terrifying. Um, and also imposter syndrome. Like why would 500 people want to listen to whatever silly things I have to say? It's wild. So if I'm bringing any entertainment into your life or if I brighten your day or if I give good book reviews, whatever it might be that you might gain from this channel, even if it's just one video, I am so glad that there's a community that I can grow and be a part of and the people that I've met because of this. It's amazing. But with that said, thank you so very much. I'm very appreciative. Uh, this is a very lackluster 500 subscriber video. I do think that I want to try and do live reading sprints to celebrate. That has coordinating that I'll have to do, but they will be the first live sprints on my channel, which is exciting and terrifying all at the same time. But today we're just gonna do something a bit more chill and relax. We're going to discuss new releases for the second half of 2023. I don't have too many, she says, with a, a lot of tabs open. It's not too many. Uh, these are just the ones that have really grabbed my attention that I've seen. I'm sure there will be more, but these are the ones that I'm, like, excited about. So, we might as well just jump in. I won't be talking about the same books that I talked about in the year-long anticipated releases that I posted in what January. Those were all books at any time of the year that I was excited for, um, Lightbringer, that kind of stuff, but since I've already talked about them, I won't touch on them here, but just know there's still a few that I'm waiting for that I'm very excited about. I, my pre-orders? Too many. <laughs> it's great. So, let's jump right in. We're gonna start July 11th, that's what, two weeks from now? So, July 11th, first thing, I have Starbringer by Tracy Wolf and Nina Croft. I've heard the name Nina Croft. I couldn't tell you anything that they've written, but I do know Tracy Wolf, author of the big hit series Crave. On my list, I definitely want to get to it at some point. It's a supernatural, paranormal, romance, high school thing on the list. But this is their new collab. I'm assuming they're working on it together. Nina Croft's name is so small, um, but it's fine. The sun is dying and it's happening way too damn fast. <laughs> the drama already. With the clock ticking, the nine planets only hope of survival rests on the, nope, on a fancy space station and the alien artifact it's carrying. Which is why it really sucks when some jackass doesn't want the universe saved and blows that station up while you're still on it. So if your only choices are flaming death or stealing a flying hunk of space junk, you picked that busted ass spaceship. What a synopsis. Even if it leaves seven strangers with deadly secrets trapped together, a princess, a prisoner, a con artist, a warrior, a priestess, a mercenary, mer mercenary and an asshole in charge of us all. Now every faction in the galaxy is hunting this ship from the sisterhood of the corporation to and the rebellion joining in on the fun too. We just need to stop drinking, fighting, and screwing long enough to evade them all and save the freaking universe dot 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 somehow. Because apparently the only thing standing between a dying sun and ultimate salvation is seven unlikely misfits dot 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 um, heroes. <laughs> Talk about a synopsis, right? So this is going to be an adult queer 
fantasy, romance, sci-fi. It feels a little bit more sci-fi, just with, like, the space element, um, but I do see in the genres tag on Goodreads, which are not always reliable, but I'm still gonna go off of it, it does say lesbian. Let's go lesbians. That said, I'm intrigued. The synopsis is weird. It's a little kooky, it's a little silly, it's a little funny, but I think that this would be a very fun, light-hearted, um, 2010s era vibe. It's also 608 pages, which feels like too much. I hope it's a standalone. Um, either way, interesting, is it not? It's, it's certainly something. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm intrigued. I don't know if I'll get to it this year. Likely not, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> All right, next one also comes out July 11th. This is going to be the first book in a series. I'm not sure if it's a trilogy or a duology. This is titled The Stars Are Dying, and I'm going to butcher this. This is by Chloe C. Penarada. Sorry. Um, and it says, The brightest star needs the darkest nights. This is a fantasy romance with Faye. It's adult, and there's also vampires. An abandoned world by the celestial guardians and left to suffer a tyrant king's religion. All Astrea knows is safety in seclusion. With fragmented memories of only five years of her life, she's determined to uncover more about her past, even if that means fleeing a cruel, the cruel arms that hold her safe from the wicked vampires rumored to roam the land. But when Astrea stumbles upon the mysterious knight, she soon realizes determination alone isn't enough to guard her heart. He lingers like the darkness that expands between the stars, and soon she discovers her captor's wicked, wicked means of control weren't based on a lie to keep her under locks after all. In her desperation, Astrea accepts Knight's help before she can decide if she might have sold her allegiance to one of the bloodthirsty beings of people of her world fear. Once their bargain is struck, Astrea's chance to escape comes in the form of accompanying her best friend Cassia to the King Central. There on royal territory is the cemetery of the Libertanum, a succession of trials, buzzword trials, hosted by the king in which five human lands compete for a cycle of safety from the vampires seeking blood, claiming souls, and scavenging after dark. So when the tragedy strikes, Astrea must decide if taking the place of a murdered pa participant for the safety of her kingdom is a bruise is worth dying for. And the answers to her past really are her strongest desires. So yeah, I like this cover. I think it's very simple and elegant and it screams fantasy romance. Um, I don't understand if fantasy romance is fantasy first, romance second, or if it's the other way around. That's getting really confusing for me, but I am intrigued. I like vampires. I like trials. I'm interested, especially if the Celestial Gardens, Guardians, that feels like it could be godly, um, which is always an element that I also appreciate. So I'm intrigued. I'm excited. Last one for July 11th. This one I don't know a lot about. It's fantasy, historical fiction with romance, Gothic and Paranormal is also tagged. This is The Carnival of Curiosities by Amy Gibbs, and the tagline is a dazzling gothic tale of Faustian bargains, jealousy, and murder set in a sp spectacular circus where star-crossed lovers' destinies are forged at an unexpected price for readers of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So it seems like there's a traveling circus, and the synopsis doesn't really give a whole lot away, I'll be honest, but I am still very intrigued if you're unfamiliar. <laughs> um, carnival settings is one of my absolute favorites, so I will read just about anything in that setting, and that tone. All right. Oh, I lied to you. This is also July 11th. So sorry, my guys. Um, this is Dark Water Daughter by H.M. Long. This is the first book in the winter C potential trilogy, I'm assuming. Um, this one has a lot of my buzzwords as well. A storm slinger and pirate hunter join forces against a deathless pirate lord in this swashbuckling Jacob Bean adventure on the high seas. 
launching the Winter Seas series full of magic betrayal, redemption, and fearsome women for readers of Adrian Young, R.J. Barker, and Naomi Novik. Um, two of those authors I'm very familiar with, R.J. Barker I'm not, but I'm very excited for this. Come sail the Winter Sea for action-packed, high-stake adventures, rich characteriz characterizations, and epic plots full of intrigue and betrayal. I truly love pirate books. I actually, I know, book buying band, Sam, get better. We're working on it. I did buy the newest uh, Daughter of the Pirate King, mainly because I really wanted the covers to match because I'm very excited for the, I want to say, it's not quite a standalone like companion piece, but it's following the events of the second book, um, I'm assuming like further future, but the new covers are going to match this now. They re they rebranded their new covers. I think they're gorgeous and they've got special sprayed edges. It looks so much smaller than my original copy, but either way, this is what I ended up buying. I love pirate books. Okay, carrying on. July 5th, I have Their Vicious Games. This is a young adult thriller by Joelle Wellington. A black teen desperate to regain her Ivy League acceptance enters an elite competition only to discover that the stakes aren't just high, they're deadly. In this searing thriller, it's Ace of Spade meets Squid Games with a sprinkle of The Bachelor. Does that not sound so fun? I have plans to read Ace of Spades finally this year. I've had it since it came out. I've heard fantastic, fantastic things. It's definitely high on my list. But Their Vicious Games sounds like a very fun... But, uh... Wow, it would be amazing if I could, you know, think of words if I was going to, like, film a YouTube video. That'd be crazy. Um, very dark academia, it feels, with uh, competition, which intrigues me so much. I'm so excited. I typically don't read into my thriller synopsis. I like going in blind. But this one, ooh, the cover does not give the same vibes of what my brain is thinking, though. So I'm trying to be like, okay... Posh kids in an Ivy League school makes sense for the cover. Um, but, like, Vicious Games? I'm excited. When is... Is it September? I think it's September when the buzzword thon hosted by Books and Lala. I think it's September when, like, game-related words are in the title. So if you're looking for something, here you go. Okay, this next one I'm very intrigued about. This is also... July 25th. This is Bonesmith by Nikki Pau Preto. This is the first book in the Dead of, uh, nope, House of the Dead series. You will see a theme of house popping up quite a few times. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what's going on. I'm kind of here for it though, I won't lie. This is tagged as Gideon the Ninth meets Game of Thrones while walkers in this dark young adult fantasy about disgraced ghost fighting warriors who must journey to a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince. Hot. I'm so into it. I do hope it has like that queer touch of Gideon the Ninth. Um, I'll understand if they don't, but I would, I would, I would like that. Ready your blade, defeat the undead. I have somewhere in my mess of this office. Somewhere I have the first, I want to say, two chapters from Owl Crate. They, like, sent it out. I'm kind of low-key hoping this will be an Owl Crate pick, but because they gave us the chapter, the preview, I'm afraid that we're not going to be getting it. But it would be really nice, because I think this cover is so badass, and I'm very intrigued. All right, next, from author Kirsten White, same author who wrote Hyde, very hit or miss uh, thriller horror comes another horror thriller mystery for adults. This comes out August 1st and it is titled Mr. Magic. Who is Mr. Magic? Former child stars reunite to uncover the tragedy that ended their show and discover the secret of its enigmatic host in this dark supernatural thriller from number one New York bestselling author. Yes. I, oh, 
that pitch really excites me. I actually, I'm one of the few outliers. I thought Hyde was a lot of fun. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the thrill of it. I thought that the twist, although a little out of pocket, a little weird, I actually enjoyed it. I did have fun the whole time. Um, and I gave it four stars. So I'm so excited to see what this one has in store. 30 years after a tragic accident shut down productions in the classic children's program, Mr. Magic, the five surviving cast members have done their best to move on. But just as generations of cultishly devoted fans still cling to the lessons they've learned from the show, the cast, known as the Circle of Friends, have spent their lives searching for the happiness they felt when they were on it. The friendship, the feeling of belonging, and the protection of Mr. Magic. But with no surviving video of the show, no evidence of who directed or produced it, and no records of who or what the beloved host actually was, memories of all the former circle of friends has. When the twist of fate brings the castmates back together at a remote dessert filming compound that feels like they've been waiting that feels like it's been waiting for them all this time. Even though they haven't seen each other for years, they understand one another better than anyone has since. After all, they're the only ones who hold the secret of that circle, the mystery of the magic man in his infinitely black cape, and maybe the answers to what really happened on the deadly last day. But as the circle of friends reclaims parts of the past, they begin to wonder, are they here by choice or have they been lured into a trap? Because magic never forgets the taste of your friendship. Like, I'm sorry, that just sounds so good. I'm so intrigued. Ah! Okay, this next one is really interesting. August 8th, we are getting the sequel? Sequel to Dead in... Dead in... Dead in the... Oh, no. Night Swim. Wow, that took me a second. <laughs> that was like one of the first thrillers I've ever read in my life. Um, Megan Golden's sequel in the Rachel Crawl series. I'm not going to read the synopsis because I do not want to know, but Night Swim is about our main character, Rachel. She has a true crime podcast and she's been getting a lot of messages from this girl, Hannah, who's like, please come to my town. Please um, investigate my sister's death. I think something's going on here. But instead, Rachel goes to that town to investigate, or not to investigate, but to do a podcast, basically to tell the news of a trial actively happening for sexual assault. And whilst Rachel is there just, like, speaking about that ongoing case and the trial, Hannah kind of slips in more and more, and then eventually they start doing more investigation. That was a very poor synopsis, but I'm very excited. I really love the podcast element. I thought the narration was really good. Obviously, it's going to delve into deep topics. So, look out for yourself. Check the content warnings for that one. But it was one that I actually really enjoyed, even though it was hard to listen to. I thought it was a well-written book and, like, well-discussed and well-done. So, yes, I do recommend. I'm very excited for those Dark Corners very excited. This next one is also a sequel, so we'll kind of gloss over quickly. Fox Glove by Adeline Grace is coming out August 22nd. This is the sequel to Belladonna. I am intrigued to see where this goes. The first one you could easily read as a standalone if you like just ignored the epilogue, but in this we are following Cigna, who is surrounded by death. It seems to follow her very a series of unfortunate events esque and eventually ends up with I think her aunt or something and one of them are, are sick uh, I think her cousin's sick anyways irrelevant she's unable to die and she has this very strange relationship with death himself where he kind of has to come to collect her family members when they pass away uh, but since she's unable to die he's also been there for her attempts and I love death I love death so much, but there's also this stable boy. It's a little bit of a love triangle because she's like, yeah, the manifestation of death. No, thank you. That seems awfully strange, but they kind of team up a little bit. It's kind of cool and badass. I really enjoyed it. It's very historical setting, um, very gothic, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. 
I know it's gonna be following the same characters, so I'm intrigued in that. I also know that Adeline Grace has my heart. One of the few authors I follow on Instagram is going to be putting a ball scene in this book as well, just like in Belladonna, just like in All the Stars and Teeth, and I just appreciate an author who's always gonna give me a ball scene. Okay, this next one I'm stoked about. So, we're coming back to the house thing. This is House of Marion by J.L. Fantasy young adult romance comes out August 29th. New York bestsellers of modern day YA romance fantasy series open opener about a glamorous magic world of society, so blah, blah, social elites, forbidden love, and dark magic that could destroy it all. Uh, must read for Lee Bardugo, Stephanie Garber, and Bridgerton fans. Rich is the blood of the chosen. 17-year-old Quelt has lived her entire life on the run. She and her mother have fled from city to city in order to hide the deadly magic that flows through Quell's veins until someone discovers her dark secret. To hide from the assassin hunting her and to keep her mother out of harm's way, Quell reluctantly inducts into a dobu, de, uh, debu, debu, I don't like this word, debutante, debutante, you know like in Bridget, you know what I'm, debutante society, you know what I mean, you're like high class, you know, anyways, of magical social elites called the order that she never knew existed, if she can pass their three rites of membership, mastering their proper form of magic, she'll be able to secretly bury her forbidden magic forever, if caught, she will be killed, stakes are high, we love it. But becoming the perfect debutante is a lot harder than Quell imagined, especially when there's more than tutoring happening with Jordan, her brooding mentor, and assassin in training. When Quell uncovers the deadly lengths the Order will go to defend its wealth and power, she's forced to choose. Embrace the dark magic she's been running from for her entire life, or risk losing everything and everyone she's grown to love. Still, she fears the most formidable monster she'll ever have to face is the one inside. Brimming with ball gowns and betrayals, magic and mystery, decadence and darkness, House of Marion is perfect for readers who crave morally grave characters, irresistible romance, dark academia, and a deeply intoxicating and original world. That's like a lot of hype. That's like, you're promising a lot there. I'm excited. I'm so excited. That one's really like, oh. Okay, next, same day, August 29th, Isabel Cañas has Vampires, I'm so sorry, okay, Vampires of El Norte, or is it Vampires of El Norte? I can't remember because I've taken both Spanish and Italian, and although they are very much the same, they are still quite different, and I can't remember if the E is pronounced in Spanish like it is in Italian. I assume Vampires of El Norte. Sorry if that's incorrect. This is a horror historical fiction with vampires, as the title, you know, tells you. Vampires and Viqueros face off in the Texas-Mexico border in the supernatural western from the author of The Hacienda. I have not read The Hacienda. I would like to. It's on my book of the month shelf. It's every October rolls around and I'm like, this is the time, this is the time. So my goal is this October <laughs> to absolutely read it. Um, this one concerns me because it's Western. I love vampires. I like a historical fantasy. That's fine with me. Westerns, not a buzzword. That could be an anti-buzzword of mine. It's not a genre that I have any interest in. There are the movies that I probably hate the most. Um, so it's a little like, I don't know. But I'm intrigued nonetheless. I'm definitely definitely going to look out for all of the hype that comes out around it and uh, see as the reviews come in and see like what I'll most align with. Okay this next one also buzzwords. Midnight at the Houdini by Delia S. Dawson. This is a fantasy young adult as per usual that's my genre. This comes out September 5th. A girl discovers a surreal hotel where no one ever leaves. When the clock struck, strikes midnight She'll be trapped there forever unless she's able to break free from the magic that in turn breaks all her rules. Perfect for fans of Carval and the Starless Sea. The night is perfect and glorious and sparkling. Too beautiful to be real. Like magic. So, this one has like a Las Vegas atmosphere with, you know, a hotel that kind of like 
traps you in. So in this we have Anna who's a stage manager for her sister Emily who's like the star of the show and eventually kind of tries to flee that. Comes across this hotel, the Houdini, and meets a boy Max who kind of gives her a tour, shows her around. And once she is center stage in a place that anticipates her every desire with a boy who only has eyes for her. But that's because the Houdini has no other guests. No one ever enters the Houdini and no one ever leaves. When the cl clock strikes midnight, Anna will be trapped in the Houdini forever. If Anna's ever going to find out who she is on her own in the real world, she'll have to make an impossible escape. But will she be able to do it if it means leaving Max behind? So it's kind of giving Hotel Magnifique vibes. Maybe with like a sprinkle of horror, which Hotel Magnifique definitely had. I would love, I would love a horror book from that author. But I'm intrigued. I will try not to read it and compare too much to Hotel Magnifique because that's like, that is the book in the forefront of my brain when it comes to magical hotel stories. But I'm intrigued nonetheless. I think it'll be a very fun uh, story with like having to do this magic uh, big escape type of thing. I don't know. It seems interesting. I've also recently come to learn that I am allergic to C4s, but that's all we have in the fridge, so I'm gonna keep drinking them. Next, September 12th. Very exciting. Mono Awad's new book, Rouge. Rouge? Rouge. Rouge. The English language is really hard. From the critically acclaimed author of Bunny comes a horror-tinted gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother unex Mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. Can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is more than skin deep? I'm intrigued about this because it seems a little bit in the realm of Mona Awad, but yet so very different because I have not yet gotten to Bunny. It's on the list. I will get to it very soon, I do promise. But All's Well is kind of a Shakespeare retelling. So it falls in the line of retellings but set in modern day um, but having like similar themes while still throwing in like horror commentary and I'm very intrigued to see what this one is about. I feel like horror tinted gothic fairy tale right up my alley those are my buzzwords but I'm interested to see how Mona Awad does this. Snow White means eyes wide shut in this surreal descent into the dark side of beauty, envy, grief, and the complicated love between mothers and daughters. With black humor and seductive horror, Rouge explores a cult-like nature of the beauty industry, as well as the danger of internalizing its pitiless gaze. Brimming with California sunshine and blood red rose petals, Rouge holds up a warped mirror in our relationship with morality, our collective fixation on, with the surface, and the wondrous deep longing that might lie beneath. I think this will have very interesting commentary. I think that that is something Mona Wad really has, is just interesting things to tell us. Um, I'm gonna be interested. I hope that it's a little bit more horror fairy tale than I'm hoping for more than I'm I think it's going to be, if I'm being honest, but I'm really excited nonetheless. Okay, we still have more to do. This is taking me too long. Next we have Jennifer L. Armentrout's newest release, September 12th. This is Fall of Ruin and Wrath. She lives by her intuition. He feeds on her pleasure. Long ago, the world was destroyed by gods. Only nine cities were spared, separated by vast wildernesses, team teeming with monsters in unimaginable dangers, each city is now ruled by a guardian royalty who feed on moral pleasure. Born with an intuition that never fails, Kalista knows her talents of are of great value to the power hungry of the world. So she lives hidden as a courtesan to a baron of Archwood. In exchange for his protection, she grants him information. When her intuition leads her to safe, save a traveling prince in dire trouble, the voice inside her blazes with warning and promise. Today he'll bring her joy, one day he'll be her doom. When the Baron takes an interest in the traveling prince, and the prince takes an interest in Castilla, Calista, sorry, she becomes the prince's temporary companion, 
but the city simmers with rebellion and with knights and monsters at her city gates in a hungry prince in her bed intuition may not be enough to keep her safe Calista must follow her intuition to safety or follow her heart to her downfall um it's tagged adult but it's also tagged new adult it's also tagged high fantasy it's fantasy romance as expected with jennifer l armentrout but i'm excited to see something new um i've yet dip my toes into the Blood and Ash universe, probably because I hear that Blood and Ash is really good by a good majority of people, and that the companion novels are quite carbon copies of Blood and Ash. So it's not something that I'm chomping at the bits to get to, but I am excited to see something new. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It could go many ways. Okay, next I have Court of Shadows book one, Play of Shadows by Sebastian de Castell. This is an adult epic fan fantasy it's set. It's tagged Canada. Um, it's also tagged LGBT and also tagged as sci-fi. Swordplay magic intrigue and friendship stronger than iron. The first volume in the new swash swashbuckling fantasy series um, from the author of The Great Coats. I haven't heard of that. I don't like that last name. Demolis Shade Mant Ag Mantain. Shade Mantain? What is this last name? Picked a poor knight to flee the judicial duel. He has precious little hope of escaping the wrath of the vixen, the most feared duelist in the entire city until he stumbles through the stage door of magnificent Ap Aperto Belza and tricks his way into the company of an archaic law provides a temporary respite for his troubles until one night a gas ghostly voice in his head causes Demolis to fumble his lines inadvertently blurring out a dead dreadful truth. The city's most legendary hero may actually be a traitor and a brutal murderer. With only the help of his boisterous and lusty friend Barreto, a beautiful assassin whose target may well as may as well be Demolis himself. I hate this name. I'm so sorry. And a company of misfit actors who'd just as soon see him dead. His failed son of the great coat, two great coats. Oh, ties in. Should I read the great coats first? Oh no. This failed son of two great coats must somehow find within himself the courage to dig up long buried truths before the ruthless band of bravos known as the Iron Orchids come for his head. Oh, and there's still the matter of the vixen waiting to duel him. So I'm very intrigued, mostly because I have found that books with masks on the cover often pique my interest. The word shadows also piques my interest. The second I see those on books, I'm instantly more interested. And I'm wondering if I should do a themed video where I'd kind of explore that more. Okay, this next one I'm a little bit more hesitant about. It's not like highly anticipated, but I'm intrigued. Uh, September 26th, a horror um, adult fiction is coming out and it's titled And Then She Fell by Alicia Alicia Elliott, a mind-bending, razor-sharp look at motherhood and mental health that follows a young indigenous woman who discovers the picture-perfect life she's always hoped for may have horrifying consequences. So I'm not going to read the full synopsis, but my thing about this is I don't love books about motherhood. I, I'm not a mom. I don't really wish to be right now. Um, it's not... Those aren't buzzwords that really draw me in they don't really intrigue me but because I have more recently read The Haunting of Alejandra I am not completely opposed to it and I think that it can cause really interesting conversations about motherhood especially with mental health involved so I will eventually pick it up I think I'll definitely look wait for some reviews to come in. I don't know how big this is going to get in comparison to other authors, but I'm very intrigued to see if it's something that I could like or not. Um, it's just, yeah, anything about motherhood, I get instantly a little bit scared. All right, next, we've got a big one. Everyone's aware, October 3rd, Ashley Winstead's news book. 
Um, Midnight is the Darkest Hour. This is going to be a gothic southern thriller about a killer haunting a small Louisiana town where two outcasts, a preacher's daughter and a boy from the wrong side of the tracks, holds the key to uncovering the truth. For fans of Verity and A Flicker in the Dark, I don't know why we're comparing things to Verity. That... <laughs> I'm sorry. Verity by Colleen Hoover. No, I have not read it, but I have seen with Cindy's, Cindy's video where I know the entire plot. I know how that book goes. What parts of Verity are we comparing to this? Why? <laughs> Those feel so vastly different. A dark and powerful novel like fans have come to expect from Ashley Winstead. This is an examination of the ways we've become this is an examination of the ways we've come to expect love, religion, and stories to save us, the lengths we have to go in order to take back power and the monstrous works of being a girl in this world. That's me, a monster of the world. Sup, bitches. So that's that. This one, this might be the one that I am most excited for. I've heard about it a couple of times. I don't know why I'm so excited. October 3rd. A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Han. From three-time Shirley Jackson, world-famous and Nebula award-winning author, Elizabeth Hand comes the first ever authorized novel to return in the world of Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House. A suspenseful, contemporary, and terrifying story of longing and isolation all its own. So this is basically an official sequel to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. That's wild. Um, I'm incredibly to s excited to see how this goes, where this goes. I, 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 I need, I need to read this as the same time of The Haunting of Hill House, like back to back tandem. That's a reading vlog. I, there we go. It's coming um, sometime in <laughs> October, I guess. I, I just, there's something about it that really excites me. Also, I see Holly's girlfriend, Nissa, so that's exciting. We love the gays. Uh, yeah, I'm, I just, I'm so intrigued to see what this has to offer. I feel like you have to go into it with high expectations because Shirley Jackson is incredibly famous. Like, her works are constantly the inspiration for so much. Like, the Netflix shows massive. So to say that this was authorized to be a sequel set in the same universe, direct tie to Shirley Jackson, it has to be good, right? Like, you can't fumble that and have, like, a, a bad book be so closely tied. I don't know. I think I'm putting way too much pressure on it, but I'm very excited, very intrigued. I cannot wait. Next one. Very exciting. I can't believe I didn't talk about this. I don't know if I knew about it then. October 17th, Adrian Young's newest novel is coming out, and it is, I think, a standalone, and it's completely new. It is fantasy, mystery, thriller. This is adult, so this will be their second adult book. I haven't read Spells for Forgetting just yet, but I will soon. I'm excited. A woman risks everything to end her family's century-old curse, solve her mother's disappearance, and find love in a mesmerizing novel. I'm so excited! With the unmaking of June Faro, Adrienne Young delivers a brilliant novel about romance, mystery, and a touch of the impossible, a story you will never forget. I love Adrian Young. I follow her on Instagram. The fact that she is such a successful author with four children amazes me every day. Um, so cool. Love their work. I absolutely adore Fable and The Last Legacy and Sky in the Deep. So good. I did a dedicated reading vlog to Adrian Young, one of my favorite authors. I've enjoyed everything I've read so far. I'm so excited to continue down this path with Adrian Young and see what their adult books are like. I'm just so excited. Ah! Okay, Halloween. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, Alex E. Haro is coming out with her next novel. This is a fantasy, horror, gothic, adult fiction with romance. Ah! This is Starling House. I'm too excited. 
a contemporary gothic fairy tale about a small town haunted by the history it can't quite seem to bury and the uncanny clever young woman who finds herself drawn to the house that sits at the crossroads of it all. The Starling House is odd and ugly and full of secrets just like its heir. Opal knows better than to mess with haunted houses and brooding men, but it might come blah, blah, blah. but it might be a chance to get her brother out of Eden. And it feels dangerously like something she's never had a home. But she isn't the only one interested in the house or the horrors and wonders that lie beneath it. If Opal wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. She'll have to dig up her family's dark past. Rude camera cutting me off. And let herself dream of a bright future. She'll have to go down, down into the Underland, capital U, and claw her way back into the light. This is a sweeping and romantic new novel. Ah! I'm so excited. Um, I have not read Alex E. Haro's other books. I read one novella. Let's see. 10,000 Doors of January, Once in Future Witches. I've read um, the first book in the Fractured Fable series and I really enjoyed it and I'm so excited to continue. I will be reading Once in Future, future the, the, the Once in Future Witches here very soon because I have it on Libby right now. So I'm very excited to see if I like this author and jive with them. If I do, that's great because I also have the 10,000 Doors of January on my shelf right now. And it's also on one of my TBRs for the year. So I'm going to be diving into Alex E. Haro, And if I love her, um, win for me because a new book. Great. Very quickly, we're just going to mention November 7th, I Am Flame by Rebecca Yaros is coming out. This is a sequel to Fourth Wing. There is no information on what this is about. It literally says, don't miss the new explosive sequel to Rebecca Yaros' best-selling hit, Fourth Wing. Um, if you read it, you know the cliffhanger we're all waiting for. I'm very excited that we're getting this so soon. Moving on. All right, last two, and these will go by pretty quick. We have a sequel and a prequel. Prequel, Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lantes. No, I haven't read it yet. Yes, I will read it before this book comes out. Um, this comes out November 7th. When an injury throws a young, battle-hungry orc off her chosen path, she may find what we need isn't always what we seek. Um... I'm very excited. I think that these are just the most wonderful, potential, uh, very long-running series that I think is so needed. I love high fantasy. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I love everything of that type. And having cozy Dungeons and Dragons, that is everything to me. Like, yes, Dungeons and Dragons is very, like, go fight the bad guys go into a dungeon, get lost, so so on and so forth. But there's also just, like, those sweet in-between moments where you're hanging out and in, waiting for your next adventure. Like, those are incredibly important parts to the storytelling that comes with tabletop RPGs. And so it's just really exciting and cool to see it in novel form. I don't know. It's just, like, that's so cool to me. So I'm very excited to dive into these. Um, and then also... November 7th, big day for me. Nightbane comes out by Alex Astor. This is the sequel to Lightlark. Um, you know it. You hate it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm actually very excited for this. I will be rereading Lightlark before this comes out and then diving right back into this. Um, I don't expect it to be a lot better than Lightlark, but I do have decent expectations that it will be a little bit better. I don't remember where it left off, so I don't know what's going to happen in this next one. I think, like, the, the aisles will come together or something. Not really sure. What a bummer of a final <laughs> book to leave you off on. Um, but that's all of the ones that I'm personally very much looking forward to. What are you looking forward to? Did I talk about everything that you're familiar with? Probably not. So you should tell me. Very demanding, I know. Tell me, tell me your favorite uh, anticipated release of the year. <laughs> Um, tell me what you're looking forward to the end of the year. We've got six months to go. It's wild. I don't know how that happened. How are, how are we almost in July? I'm not stressed at all. Anywho, that's gonna be it. 
I'm gonna go have a crisis. See you later. Bye! <laughs>